Hello students, welcome to the session. In this class, we are going to start with theme 5 and we are going to learn certain things about light. Now, when I talk about light, what is light? Light is a form of invisible energy. That means we cannot see light. It is a form of energy which is invisible to us. But what is so wonderful about light that light brings in us the sensation of vision. That means when we look around ourselves, we are able to see everything because of light. How can I say so? Let's take a simple example. If I ask you to enter into a dark room at night, will you be able to see anything? No. But if I turn on an electric bulb, you will be able to see why? Because an electric bulb is going to enlighten the things around you. So, though we are not able to see light, light makes everything visible for us. So, let us understand certain things related to light. The first thing that we are going to understand is what are the different sources of light. Like the electric bulb in a dark room is a source of light. Similarly, when we talk about sources of light, sources of light means the objects or the places where we see the light is being emitted. So the first thing is we need to be very, very thankful to sun. Our own sun is the ultimate source of light for us. So this is the primary source of light. So I actually gave you an example where you have to enter a dark room at night. But in the morning, do we have to turn on the electric bulb? No. It is the sunlight, the ample of sunlight makes everything around us in light, right? So sun is the primary source of light on our planet. It has a huge ball of burning gases which gives out tremendous amount of heat and light in us. So sun actually is a big ball of burning gases due to which it is able to emit light as well as heat energy. Do you feel heat? Or do you feel the warmth of the sun when you stand in the sunlight? It's true because the sun produces heat as well as light. Right? The other way is when we talk about sun, what is sun? Ideally, our sun is nothing but one of the billions and trillions of stars out there in the big vast universe. So if sun is able to emit light, what, what can you say about the other stars? So in the daytime, sun, which is very near to us, is able to enlighten us with its light. At the night time, you might have seen those brightest, tiniest dots in the night sky, which it keeps on shining. Now, they seem to be very tiny because they are very, very far away from us. But they are also gigantic balls of gases giving out a lot of heat and light. So, as sun, stars are also distant suns, which are extremely far away from our solar system and hence the light that comes from them seems to be very weak. But they are also the sources of light, right? In addition, we have lots of things in our day-to-day -day life. Now, if I ask you this question, where well, if it is night time, there's no sun and the stars are very far off, we are still able to see things. It's not like at the night time our life stopped. We are able to see what's happening in a room by turning on an electric bulb or a tube light, right? So even that are the sources of light. The only difference is the stars and the sun are natural sources of light, whereas there could be man-made sources as well. So in addition to it, a glowing electric bulb, a burning candle, a lighted torch, a glowing fluorescent tube or a kerosene oil lamp, all of these are sources of light. What is the difference between the first one and the second one? These are natural sources of light, right? The natural sources of light. Humans have not made the sun, but... Humans can make a candle, they can make a glowing fluorescent tube, they can make kerosene oil lamps. So these are man-made or artificial source of light, right? 
Now, when I talk about sources of light, you might have even seen some little jugnus around your area. What are those jugnus? Those jugnus are nothing but fireflies. So, there are some animals and insects as well who produces light. So, insects like glowworm and fireflies emit light in the darkness. There are certain kinds of fish also which emit light. So the light received from them is very, very small. It cannot enlighten a whole room. But we cannot say that that are not sources of light. Hence, we define a new phenomena here that if an organism is able to produce light, then we call that phenomena is bioluminance. What is it? The process by which light is given out by living bodies is called bioluminance. Right? So, here we understood about sources of light. Now, when I talk about these different sources of light, I told you some are natural, some are man-made. But, when I talk about, look around yourself. Do you see the sources of light? All, all the objects around you are sources of light? No. The sources of light are one or two or thrice as we discussed. But, we are able to see everything. So, they are emitting light? No, they are not. So, there may be two kinds of bodies in the world that are the one which emit light that are called luminous bodies and the one which do not emit light that are called non-luminous bodies. So, let us read what are the differences between luminous and non-luminous bodies. All the bodies which emit light energy by themselves are called luminous bodies. The examples are all the examples that we have seen such as sun, such as tube light, such as an electric bulb, even firefly and glowworm. All those objects and all those bodies which are able to emit light on their own are called luminous bodies. Right? That means the one which are providing us with their light are what we define as luminous body. But what about the other things around us which we are able to see? But do that, does that mean they are also emitting light? Think of a table, a chair, you, me. We are not emitting light. Hence, what are we? We are non-luminous bodies. So, bodies such as metals, stones, trees, bushes, furniture, houses, electric poles and so on. We do not have our own light. So, the bodies which we have already got to know which have their own light are called luminous body. But the body which do not emit light of their own are what? They are non-luminous bodies. Now, the question comes if they are non-luminous, they do not have their own light, how we are able to see them? So, if we are able to see them because the light energy from a luminous body falls on the non-luminous body which make them visible. So, it's not like we are not able to see an object if it is not emitting its own light, but we are able to see that object only when the luminous body light is falling on the non-luminous body, right? So, the bodies which do not emit light of their own, but reflect the light energy falling on them are called non-luminous body. Whereas luminous bodies are the bodies which have the light of their own are called non-luminous body. They are the one which provide us the light. Right? Let us now understand how a non-luminous body can be made luminous. Now this is very very interesting. We just talked about that yes you meet table, chair, metal, stone, all the objects that do not have their own light are not luminous. And the luminous objects are the one which have their own light. Now, is there any way I can make a non-luminous object luminous? Do you think? The answer is yes, we can. And it's a very interesting thing. Any non-luminous body, doesn't matter it is table, chair, stone, metal, you or me, every body we are talking here, any non-luminous body can be made luminous only by a simple thing that is by heating. But when I am saying heating it, it means heating it to a great temperature of around thousands of degrees of Celsius. 
So let's take a very simple example. Let's say I take an iron wire and I start heating it on gas flame. In two minutes, the iron wire will get red hot, right? This is what happens. See what is happening here. There is an iron rod and on this iron rod, we are putting a flame directly and once we let the flame on the iron rod, its temperature will keep on rising and it will reach a point when this iron rod will become red hot. That means very, very high temperature and that is the time when it will start emitting light. Even it will start emitting. If you want to check, you can just turn off the light of the room. You will see you are able to see the red tip which is hot for the iron because it has reached a very great temperature. So at this temperature that is at 600 degree to 800 degree Celsius, the temperature of the iron rod when reaches this, it start emitting light. So any non-luminous body can be luminous by heating it, right? Now there is another interesting question. We all know that we talk about that sun is the primary source of light. But sun sets in the night and in night we see the stars. Along with the star, there is a very bright body at the night which we call as Chandamama or our moon. Right? Now moon shines in the night sky. Thus moon should be having its own light. It should be under the luminous bodies. Right? But the answer is no. Moon along with other planets, all the other planets other than Earth in our solar system are not luminous, rather they are non-luminous. Though they seem to be shining in the night sky. Now why is it so? Now, this is an interesting answer students. We must see moon at night giving out milky white light. But when we talk about moon having its own light, that's false. The same is true if we talk about can we see planets? Yes, the planets are also visible in the night sky like shiny small dots which is similar to stars but yet they are different, right? So Venus which appear like very bright star during the early evening. Now we do call them non-luminous. Why do we call them non-luminous? What is the reason for us to call moon as well as these stars as non-luminous? Well, the simple reason is they are not producing their own light. That is why we call them non-luminous. Any body is non-luminous if it is not producing its own light. But then the question again, how come they are shining in the night sky if they are not having their own light? This is the same thing that is happening when we are talking about the objects around us. Why we are, how we are able to see these non-luminous objects? When the light from a luminous object fall on a non-luminous object, we are able to see the object. Hence, similarly, the moon and the planets reflect the light of the sun falling on them. That makes them luminous or shining in the night sky. But in reality, they do not have their own light. They are non-luminous bodies. Right, students? I hope you got this. Thank you.